and welcome. Welcome to everyone. Welcome those joining us from Sparta and Union, from Southwold and St. Thomas, from Port Stanley and London and Dorchester and Thorndale and Belmont and Denfield and Mossley and Ingersoll and Putnam and wherever you're joining from, from beyond. Welcome as we gather to worship the God who is loving us through these days. Uh, just a couple of reminders about, um, about the service to use your chat button for any uh, prayer requests or any celebrations that you want to share. Uh, birthday, uh, birth of a great, 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 great grandchild, a wedding anniversary, whatever it may be that you want to share with us. So take advantage of that and uh, we'll try and incorporate things as we go along. Uh, just one thing before we start, and that is to take a moment to think about the land that we're located on wherever we are. While we are the current stewards of the land, it was not always so. We recognize that for thousands of years before Europeans and others arrived, there were already peoples here who were stewards of the land. The Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, the Atawandaran, the Mississauga, and others. And before there were people, the land was. As Christians and as Indigenous peoples alike, we acknowledge that the land which sustains us all, the land on which we live and move and have our being, belongs to God, our Creator. I'm just going to take this off for a moment so that I can see what I'm doing. Jesus Christ, a lamp for our feet, a light for our path, the light of the world. I'm just going to put up a background here. Uh, there. Communion background. And we'll go back to our screen. And our gathering music this morning is from uh, More Voices, number 92, Like a Rock. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Mark the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. Thank you, Kathy. So I'm going to give people a minute or so to send any birthday announcements or anything they may have. And uh, in the meantime, run through a couple of announcements here. Um, just a reminder that uh, after worship today, I'm on vacation. And I'll be returning to the office on uh, J Monday, July the 25th, 26th, sorry. Uh, in my absence for Union, Tom Beecroft will be providing uh, emergency pastoral care. And for Dorchester, Mary Dillon will be covering emergency pastoral care and their phone numbers are listed in the bulletins. And, um, you know, this Zoom stuff and, and virtual worship, wow, can we ever collaborate? There's options and, and combinations of things going on over the next couple of months that just boggle the mind. So, Union is going to provide worship uh, July the 4th and the 11th on this link. 
and they invite um, Dorchester to join them if they would so wish to. And um, Reynolds Creek and St. John's Springfield, Mary Dillon's churches, have invited both Dorchester and Union to join them for the month of July, so the 4th, 11th, 18th, and 25th. Their service is at 10 o'clock, by the way. Um, Port Stanley has been invited to join uh, Union July the 4th, the 11th, and August the 1st, and uh, also to join Reynolds Creek for the month of July. And um, lastly, I think Reynolds Creek and St. John Springfield will be joining us for the month of August. So there's lots of opportunities. The links for those are on the uh, Dorchester website or um, Roberta is uh, sending them out as well to those of you in Union. Or you could try the Dorchester website. A um, Couple of other things, July the 4th service you are invited to wear something orange. So an orange shirt, an orange sweater, an orange bow in your hair, what if, if you've got hair, uh, whatever it is that you have that's orange. So you're invited to wear that on the July the 4th service. Um, for the Dorchester crowd, at the June the 23rd central board meeting, a motion was carried that permits the resumption of the uh, coffee, Wednesday morning coffee group in the parking lot when the province enters stage two, which is currently scheduled to happen this coming Wednesday, June the 30th. So as early as this Wednesday, you could return to your parking lot gatherings of the coffee group. And just a reminder that under stage two guidelines, we, you can only have a maximum of 25 people. So when number 26 arrives, somebody has to leave. And also you must stay physically distanced within your household groups. Uh, the offering, there are lots of options for offering. Uh, you can use PAR, pre-authorized remittance. You can write a check and put it in the mail to either church or drop it off in the mail slot at Dorchester. You can go on to the respective uh, websites. So dorchesterunitedchurch.ca or unionunitedchurch.ca. And um, there is a donate now button on those websites so that you can uh, contribute through Canada Helps. And also Dorchester is now accepting e-transfers and that information I believe is on the website as well. And <clears throat> one last thing, and that is that I included the lectionary readings for the next five Sundays in this week's bulletin. So you can keep track of where we are. So I'm just going to... Uh... I have one more announcement. Okay. Um, the choir's going to get together at Shaw's for ice cream, and we haven't picked a date yet, but we'll have hopefully Roberta email that date out, and we'll just gather at Shaw's and have ice cream, and anyone is welcome, Union, Dorchester, choir, not choir, it's just kind of traditional that the choir does this on our last practice every year, which we didn't have any practices, but we're still <laughs> going to do ice cream because ice cream is important. <laughs> So okay. stay tuned and check your email. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. That's an important announcement. Ice cream is always important. And I'm just gonna see if I can see, uh, let's see. Well, that didn't work. I don't see any celebrations listed. Oh, there is one. What is it? Thankful my Oma celebrated her 90th birthday this week on the 6th and 4th. Thank you. So Lindsay is thankful that her Oma celebrated her 90th birthday this past week. So maybe, yeah. and <clears throat> also there's another birthday coming up. Um, my wife has a birthday coming up. She'll be 19 again. 
so maybe we could sing happy birthday to uh, Lindsay Zoma and my wife. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Kathy. So I'm just going to scroll through here and uh, see if I can find somebody. Maybe Nancy Smith would be willing to unmute and read the call to worship with me. Sure. Thank you, Kath, uh, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Come among us, creator God, we wait for you. We come, yearning for your word of blessing. Come among us, compassionate Christ, we hope in you. We come, longing to be held safe in your embrace. Come among us, spirit of life, we wait and hope in you. We come, eager to rest in the embrace of your peace. And thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Our opening hymn is number uh, 402, We Are One. We are one as we come, as we come, joyful to be here. In the praise of our lips, there's a sense that God is near. As we seek, we are bound, and we come before of God's grace as we meet together in this place. We are one as we share, as we share brokenness and fear in the touch of our there's a sense that God is here. We are one as we care, as we hear, we are filled. And we share the God's embrace as we pray together in this place. We are one as we feast, as we feast, peace becomes the sun. In the bread and the wine, there's a sense of love divine. We are one as we come, as we feed, we are glad, and we feel refreshing grace as we meet a table in this place. We are one as we hear, as we hear, heart and head unite. In the world we receive, there's a sense that God is light. We are one as we lead, as we love, we are love. And we seek justice in God's grace as we move together from this place. Thank you, Kathy. And I would invite you to join me in our opening prayer. We gather in your presence, God, carrying our longings, our broken dreams, our fears, and a lifetime of hurts. We come to touch the hem of your garment, to have shattered hearts restored. Yet we shrink from those who come to us for hope, afraid to touch them. We come to learn to love as you loved, unconditionally, 
for we ignore our neighbors and inflict pain on loved ones. We come to learn to share as you shared, extravagantly, for we ignore and walk past those who need us most. Forgive us, God, for failing to live up to your calling. Give us grace to embrace those who frighten us, to bless those we share life with, and to lift up our brothers and sisters in need. In the name of your anointed one, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And um, <clears throat> Kathy selected this lovely anthem for us, When You Believe. And I'm <clears throat> Just find somebody here to read uh, scripture with me. Maybe Phil would be willing to read the psalm with me. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Out of the depths have I called to you. Oh God, hear my cry. Let your ears be attentive to my plea for mercy. If you should keep account of what is done amiss, O oh God, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, we will honor you. I wait for you, God. My soul waits, and in your word is my hope. My soul waits for God. More than the watchers long for morning. More than the watchers long for morning. O Israel, wait in hope, for with God there is love unfailing. With God is great power to redeem, to redeem you, Israel, from all your sins. Thank you, Phil. Their scripture lesson this morning is taken from Mark's gospel. Listen for the word of God. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet. And he begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, while he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. 
he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all out and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. May God add a blessing on the reading of this holy word and forever read its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And our hymn is from More Voices, number 159, in Star and Present. <laughs> In star and crescent, we'll answer in rugged cross and an empty tomb. We image forth what matchless love, what holy matrix found and bloom. Through different cultures, tribes, and lands, use lands as a gong to different sides. Each color of the prism's bronze green frets round of a world dazzling light. Their burning incense, tithing gifts, their breaking bread and pouring wine. Each act of ardent worship lifts one human heart to love divine. The Buddhist chant and Muslim prayer in Shofar drum in sacred song. The music grateful spirit shall give praise in voices well and strong. With varied hopes and dreams and creeds, all tiles in one mosaic hole. We serve our God in faithful deeds, all pathways to one common goal. No gender, gentle, slave, nor creed, no male and female set apart. Not all are one as belonging, how close within our maker's heart. <coughs> Thank you, Kathy. I'm just going to stop this here so I can see. There we go. Behind. So I remember many moons ago when I was in seminary studying this very piece of scripture. The story of a girl who was on death's door, dies, and is raised. And right in the middle of the story is another story about a hemorrhaging woman. I remember the professor telling us that this story within a story was unquestionably the work of some editor who dropped one story into the middle of another. The question that was asked was, why? Why would someone insert one story into the middle of another story? And I just noticed as we were reading it today that the girl was 12 years old and the woman with the hemorrhage had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. 
I, I wonder what that's all about. Anyway, I also remember this story because of another course I took at seminary. It was titled Ministry Among the Abused. We were given texts to prepare a five minute sermon from. I was given the story within the story, the story of the hemorrhaging woman. I remember the research I did in preparing that sermon. Blood makes someone ritually unclean. And if you are ritually unclean, you cannot go to the temple with the rest of the community to worship God. During the woman's cycle, she is unclean, and so is anyone who comes into contact with her. That doesn't mean just, just touching, but that goes right down to sitting where she had just been seated. It was not unknown that women would have a separate tent or room or dwelling where they would move into during their period to protect others from unwittingly coming into contact with them. And knowingly contacting someone else when you knew you were unclean could be cause for death by stoning. All of this is to say that the woman who had been hemorrhaging blood for a dozen years had been socially isolated for a dozen years. This woman would have had to use the local well at a different time of day than the rest of the women in the village. She would have had to stay in her own quarters without the ability to go to the market or anywhere else for a dozen years. We've just been through about a year and a half of trying to keep isolated. Can you imagine 12 years of complete isolation without being able to connect on Skype or Zoom or FaceTime or even the telephone? I think I would prefer actual physical death over a dozen years of social death. And then there's the story around the story, the story of the daughter of the leader of the synagogue. She is on her deathbed when Jairus approaches Jesus begging for help. And on the way to her, a messenger delivers the news that she has died. There is no longer a need for a healer. Here we have two stories. One about actual physical death and the other about a social death. And I can't but help think about the news over the last few weeks of the death of all the children at residential schools of over 100,000 students. Some estimates say that four to 6,000 children died. Other estimates say it's over 10,000 who died. Many died from tuberculosis exacerbated by malnutrition. Whatever the cause, whether their deaths were recorded or not, whether they were buried in mass graves or unmarked graves. This is a huge and tragic part of our history. On the one hand, we have the death of the children, but there's also the attempt to kill their language and their culture. And on the other hand, there's the ongoing spiritual death of the indigenous peoples over what can only be called genocide or, or at least attempted genocide. The spiritual scars are still raw. And every finding, Kamloops, Kalasis, and there will be more, bring the pain right back to the surface, like the event that just happened all over again. When God created life, God looked at all that God had made and said that it was very good. And along the way, 
we have sinned and done evil and have pitted ourselves against God. Against whatever competes with us for food, whether it be weed or insect or animal. We've even pitted ourselves against, well, against ourselves. Against those who look different or talk different or think differently or worship differently into this world Jesus came to reconcile to restore life to God's original hope in the scripture both Jairus and the hemorrhaging woman realized their need of Jesus realized that only Jesus would be able to help them Jairus thought he was asking for an intervention that would prevent a death and was eventually, what was eventually needed was an intervention to restore life. The woman knew that she too needed an intervention to restore life. Not just an end to her bleeding, but a restoration to social life. The indigenous children who have died are dead and gone. They will never grow up or have families of their own. We will never know what contributions they could have made to society. But the spiritual pain, the spiritual death that continues to this day among the survivors, that that needs to be healed. Life needs to be restored. The life of their language, the life of their culture, the life of their spirituality. And in order for that to happen, we need Jesus. We need his strength and courage and Yes, his humility. We need it so we can listen without being defensive and feeling we need to respond or to justify. We need it so we can listen and ask what is needed of us instead of trying to fix or prescribe the next steps that will happen. Coming This coming week, we mark the 154th birthday of Canada as a nation. Instead of celebrating what has been built at the expense of many, may we take the time this year to grieve the tragic events in our history. May we take the time to listen without defending or trying to fix. May we take the time to educate ourselves and commit to reconciliation and to a new life for all who live on this land, whether they be white or black, red or yellow, whether they worship creator, Allah, God, Yahweh, or other. This is our life's work if we truly believe in the life and work and sacrifice of Jesus to reconcile and to restore life. So often we think of the indigenous peoples as peoples of the treaty, but we forget treaties are made between two parties. We too are people of the treaty. It is our job to live up to our side of the treaty. It is our job to reconcile and to restore life for all. May it be so. Oh, and l'chaim, to life. Amen.
and our hymn is number 471, Eat This Bread and Never Hunger. Us to the table where the last few comes the first, asking for a cup of water. Jesus was forbidden ground, and the woman came with question to the world what she had found. Eat this bread and us to the table where the cross becomes the first. Walking down a desert highway, Jesus healed a man born blind. Soon the man became a witness to the truth we seek and find. Eat this bread and Thank you, Kathy. Um, let's see. I'm hoping maybe Lee and Marion, or at least one of them, will be the voice of the congregation as we read the uh, great prayer. I just need them to unmute. Okay, there we okay. go. And Valerie is going to uh, join me as well. Are you on, Valerie? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is not the table of um, Union United Church or of Dorchester United Church. It's not the table of the United Church of Canada. It's the table of Jesus Christ and everyone, everyone, everyone is welcome at this table. Peace be with your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us our separate ways, united in courage and peace, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, you can ask the treasurer of your church if you want. She'll tell you. I don't give a single cent to the church. Not one. I do, however, give to God through the church. It has taken me years and years of growing my spiritual discipline to reach the goal of 10% of my income being directed to God. I finally arrived. Sort of. I give to God slightly more than 10% of my net income, but less than 10% of my gross income. I guess there's always room to grow in our spiritual disciplines, just as there is always need for God's love to be made known, re made known in real and concrete ways in our community and in our world. 
won't you join me on the journey? We pray, gracious God, these offerings are a reflection of our love for you and our commitment to your kingdom of justice and peace. Use them to extend justice in this world of injustice and to bring peace to this world filled with hatred and violence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 420, Go to the World. Go to the world, go into all the earth, go preach the cross where Christ renews life's work, baptizing. here and we're all set oh here's Roberta right handy maybe Roberta would join me in the commissioning and benediction from her beautiful flower garden may the road rise to meet you may the wind be always at our back may the sun shine warm upon your face may the rains fall soft upon our fields and until we meet again, may God hold us all in the palm of God's hand. Thank you, Roberta. And you'll probably know I picked this before we got any rain. <clears throat> Our choral blessing is go now in peace.
I am going to uh, just change a couple of settings here so that people can unmute themselves. We'll take that off. We'll allow you to unmute yourselves and in invite you to, <clears throat> to unmute yourselves. And I will um, set up some individual